After a century of two world wars, totalitarian regimes, genocide, holocausts, and untold suffering, the world had great hopes for a new millennium, filled with a new spirit of unity, justice, and peace. However, the 21st century has so far been one of rising tumult, violence, and unrest. Some of the most dramatic climate changes in recorded history, natural disaster after natural disaster, worldwide economic crises, currency wars afflicting every continent on the earth, and the scourge of war, particularly in the Middle East. But what do all of these unprecedented headlines of today have in common? They were all predicted over 50 years ago. Predictions made by a woman and revealed to the world through another woman. The date is March 25th, 1945. The Second World War is in its final stages. In Amsterdam, a young woman named Ida Perdeman is sitting with her three sisters and their parish priest, Father Frehe. While they are engaged in a lively discussion, something strange happens. Ida sees a magnificent light appear. It's as if her earthly surroundings cease to exist. She sees a beautiful female figure emerging from the light, a lady who begins talking to her. They will call me the Lady Mother. This will be the first in a series of 56 reported apparitions from the Mother of Jesus that would last until 1959. The Lady says that she has been sent by God the Father and by His Son, Jesus Christ, to help humanity. She warns that the world is sliding downward into degeneration, disasters, and war, and prophesies the danger of a third worldwide catastrophe even more destructive than the first two world wars. At first glance, the Amsterdam apparitions could be dismissed as simply the product of a psychological illness. Yet further investigation shows that the middle-aged Dutch woman went through a battery of intensive psychological and medical evaluations as part of a church investigation into the alleged visions. The medical conclusions, Ida Perdeman was found to be of exceptional psychological and emotional balance, socially well-adjusted, and of an unusually down-to-earth, even unimaginative personality and temperament. But could these claimed apparitions comprise just one more expression of present-day religious fanaticism with predictions of an imminent end of the world? The messages of the Lady of All Nations say nothing about the end of the world. On the contrary, the messages speak of a future era of peace for the whole world if heaven's remedies are put into practice. The messages begin with prophecies of a social and political nature. The lady, over 50 years ago, points to specific social, political, and natural disaster events that will have meaning in a decisive period in the future. For example, in 1945, the visionary sees a vision of the Old Testament exodus of the Jewish people from Egypt, and she hears, But Israel will rise again. In fact, the independent state of Israel is declared three years later, in 1948. In 1946, the Lady grants Ida a vision of a red flag flying over China and predicts great bloodshed. In 1949, Mao Zedong wages a bloody civil war that leads to a tyrannical communist regime. In 1949, Ida sees a vision that predicts war and division in Korea and prophesies that this conflict would also be an omen of even greater danger in the future. The fighting in Korea is an omen and the beginning of great distress. In 1950, war breaks out in Korea and, as predicted, 
North Korea continues to be a grave nuclear threat for the world. The heavenly woman who describes herself as the lady of all nations predicts a new division in the world if changes are not made. Suddenly, I see Cairo very clearly and I have a strange feeling about that. Then I see several Middle Eastern peoples, Iranians, Arabs, the lady says, in a way the world will be ripped in two. Now I see the globe in front of me and I see a big jagged crack spreading, a burst that runs and twists around the world. Dr. Richard Russell is a professor of national security at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and a public authority on Middle Eastern affairs. I've been following Cairo Egyptian security for, for many years now, since the mid-1980s. And having read that message, for many years I didn't understand what that meant. I mean, what happens around Cairo? I and mean, we've had several wars in the Middle East, 1956 against the Israelis, 1967, 1973. Cairo was involved, but there wasn't warfare in the, the city proper, uh, per se. So I really didn't know what to make of this. Um, there's been a lot of frustration over the years with, with President Mubarak's regime. Uh, for three decades, he had ruled. And there was a lot of, anecdotally, you talk to friends, you get a sense that there's a lot of frustration in Egypt. But it's not until 2011 that, kaboom, you have this, this, this huge, huge um, geopolitical shift or change. President Mubarak is ousted in a relatively peaceful, relatively peaceful uh, revolution, a popular uprising against his rule. And the military doesn't opt not to physically suppress this or try to suppress this. Uh, this is a huge, huge transformation in international politics, in Middle Eastern politics. But now we have to worry about the, the rise of more militant strains of Islam that are really against challenging the West. And this is what I worry about, this split in the globe that, we, that is talked about in the Amsterdam aberrations is that there could be a, 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 you know, a w Middle East that is increasingly in turmoil, political, economic, religious turmoil, and it becomes more separated from, from Western civilization. But according to the messages, America too is at fault. America, remember your faith. Do not sow wrong ideas and confusion among your people and abroad. The Lady of All Nations exhorts America to remain what it has been. The Middle East, and particularly Jerusalem, appear in the messages as critical locales for world conflict, as predicted in this 1946 message. I see now a dome, and I hear within me, in and around Jerusalem, heavy battles will be waged, gather round together, because the battle is beginning, the gates are opening. The eastern peoples hold their hands before their faces in Jerusalem. The reference to Jerusalem is an interesting one. Um, just in terms of historical context, it's not until 1967, actually, uh, that the Israelis have a, a major war with neighboring Arab states. Uh, the Israelis did a, a, a brilliant military operation and preventively uh, struck uh, Egyptian air bases uh, and took the offensive against Arab states in the region. Uh, at that time, Jer uh, Jerusalem was controlled by Jordanian forces. So the Israelis actually were very successful and actually drove in and liberated from their perspective of Jerusalem and took control over, over Jerusalem from Jordanian forces. It was hailed as a great military success. Now we think that you think that, okay, it's fine. Not, the fighting in Jerusalem happened in 1967, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could see in the future a new round of fighting, either with the Israelis and Palestinian forces on one hand, or even uh, forces from Lebanon. Uh, in Lebanon, there was a very, very vibrant political militia movement called Hezbollah, Party of God, among it's in Arabic. Uh, it's among the Shia community, which is is a dominant uh, uh, community inside Lebanon. Uh, they claim Jerusalem too as, as theirs. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that you could have warfare initiated by Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, the Palestinians in and around Jerusalem, or, and supported by other neighboring states uh, in some future conflict. 